So a few weeks ago, I made a video talking about how there are no good options for managing movies or managing a movie library on Linux. And I think that that is still very much true. But in the comment section of that video, someone made a comment that is very profound. Something that I didn't think about at the time and that I definitely should have if I wasn't such a bleeding moron. And uh, that comment was basically, Matt, why don't you make a script? And I stared at that comment for an inordinate amount of time. And then I thought, huh, maybe I should make a script. <laughs> you, know, you know, why didn't I think of that? You dummy, I, I should have thought about making a script because really all I was looking for was a way to easily launch my movies or TV shows without having to go into a file manager like Ranger or Crusader in order to do so. Uh, and not that there's anything wrong with launching your movies that way, but I wanted something a little bit easier. So I set about making a script. Now my initial inclination of how to do this was to use a Rofi script. Now I have many Rofi scripts already. Uh, some of them were adopted from DistroTube and other places and I've you know made several of my own based on templates that I've previously made. So I have a ton of Rofi scripts so I basically know the basic layouts of a Rofi script of how to actually pipe something into Rofi so that it lists out uh, stuff, you know, whatever's in a directory or, uh, you know, a number of programs or a number, number of options, whatever. You know, I know how to do that. And uh, I spent a few hours over the course of a few days trying to get that to work. Now, there's something going on with my Rofi configuration file where it's showing icons for really weird reasons in places where it shouldn't. And I haven't been able to find that yet. I'm assuming it has something to do with the show icons flag that I have set up for when Rofi is launched in regular usage. But needless to say, I didn't figure out Rofi as much as I should have. So I was on the hunt for a different solution. And then I saw a video from Jake at Linux talking about a program called FCF. And basically what FCF is or what it stands for even, is fuzzy finding. And if you're not familiar with fuzzy finding, basically it's a searching mechanism for searching through various directories, files, whatever. And it's a fantastic program that I'd heard of before, but I'd never actually used outside of Vim. So when I watched that video, I was like, that's a very great script. I'm going to steal the idea behind it and try to make it into my movie script to see if I can make this launch my movies. Now, as it was, it wasn't going to work simply because of the way my movie library was organized. I'm a big proponent of directories. To me, directories are kind of like tabs or specific like tab groups. I can organize things into directories. I'm going to do it. I have a ton of directories. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm that way everywhere. My, my TV show folder, directory, whatever, is a bleeding mess. It's not very well organized at all, but my movies were fully organized. I'd spent a long time going through and making sure every single movie had its own directory so that it could store the movie itself, any of the movie posters that I happened to have downloaded, things like that. Unfortunately, with the way I wanted to use my movie launching script, that structure just wasn't going to work all that well. So I took all of the movie files or themselves and moved them all into one directory so that it was easier to do this script. It just seemed like the best way of doing it. Now, there are ways of writing a script so that it prunes out the things that you don't want to show. You know, I could you know, I could use grep or whatever in order just to show the things that I wanted to show, but it just was easier to put everything into one directory even though it kind of messes with my OCD. So, all that is beside the point. The script that I ended up with is a variation on the script from Jake at Linux, and all I've really done is prune it down a little bit and make it my own in certain small ways. So I'm going to show you what this script does, and then I'll show you the script itself, and I'll show you how you could adopt it if you wanted to use it for something similar to me. So let's go ahead and jump in. So before I show you the script, let me show you what it looks like and what it does. So I have it set up as a scratch pad. And the reason why I do that is because it's just easier to have it pop up with a key binding in a scratch pad on Qtile or i3 or whatever I'm using. So I do super shift B and it pops up. And this is what FCF looks like basically out of the box. I've done no styling whatsoever and it just 
looks like a list of movies. Now, you can judge me for my movie tastes if you want to. I don't care. I happen to really like horror movies, bad movies. So I have like a lot of bad movies here. I'm sure everyone will agree, but I like the movies. But anyways, <laughs> we won't need to talk about that. So the idea here is that if I wanted to say watch The Italian Job, I could just search for The Italian Job and hit enter and it would launch into MPV and it would just start playing The Italian Job. You know, if I scrub through this or whatever, you can see this is the, this is, you know, The Italian Job. That's the basic idea behind the script. I search for the movie I want to play, hit enter, and it starts playing. Now, if you are in a desktop environment or a window manager that doesn't have scratch pads, the best way to do this is probably just from the terminal. So if you have the, the script in your path, you could do movie.sh, which is the name of the script. It would run the same thing. And then I could type, you know, Italian job again. It would just play it again, just like so. And, you know, that is just basic way the script works and it is perfect for my use because that's really what I wanted to have when I made that video a few weeks ago. I wanted a way to easily access my movie library without having to get into a file manager, without having to go through and open up the directory, find the, the movie, you know, then play the movie inside of, you know, Crusader or whatever. Get to, you know, it was many, many steps and it was just more of a pain than it should have been. This is just a key binding and a search away, and it's so good. So, what does the script look like? It looks like this. It is literally three lines. The first line defines a variable that is the path to my movies. The second line is basically defining another variable. In this case, what it's doing is it's using the ls command of the path that we set above, and then it's going to use fzf, or it's going to pipe that the result of that command into FZF, and then we're going to take that menu variable, which is set here, and basically what that's doing is, is it's using MPV, and then it just gives it the path to the movie. So in this case, it's going to take the overall path of the movie's directory, and then the menu variable, which is just the name of the movie. In, in this case, the name of the movie is also going to be name of the file of the movie, so they're, it just basically creates the full path to the movie. This extra stuff here is just making it so that when I play something inside the terminal, let's just say I do that again, like so, and then I select Die Hard, right? If I just do that, I could close, I could close that particular terminal and not have MPV go away. That's what the no help is doing there in, in that and then piping into dev null. It just basically makes sure that the process of MPV doesn't get killed if the terminal itself gets killed. And that's the entire script. It's so, so good, so easy. And you could use this for basically anything that you wanted to do. If you wanted to say, if you have a, a directory of PDFs or something like that, like for what, you know, or spreadsheets, you could give it the path to your spreadsheet directory. And then instead of having MPV here, you could just have, say, LibreOffice Draw or LibreOffice or whatever, LibreOffice Wart Writer, whatever it happens to be, just the name of the application and then the path to the file. Which is, the, which is given by the two variables up there, and it would work exactly the same way. Obviously, I'm using it for movies, but it could be anything. Now, it does work, or at least in this situation, it works better when you have your movies or whatever inside of one directory. So if I go to media here and then movies, you can see I have all of my movies just in one directory. I don't have them in several different directories. Now, FZF will work with multiple directories, but if you're doing this so that you can have easy access to just these files, it's easier if you don't have to drill down into many directories. If they're just all in one, it's just a matter of searching for the thing that you need. And that's the way that I found just to be easier. So, yeah, that is my movie script. And obviously, I've taken quite a bit of inspiration from... Jake and several other people. So kudos and credit to all those people and specifically Jake for giving me the inspiration for this. I've watched more movies since I've done this than I have in a long time simply because it's easier for me to access than having to go to a file manager. So yeah, that is my movie script. If you uh, have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. Um, I, I would really appreciate it. I know that this is probably a very nerdy video. So won't appeal to very many people, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Uh, again, 
uh, head on over to Jake at Linux channel and give him a, sub a subscribe. Uh, he's a fantastic YouTuber, so does a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Mass and Rossi. I already did those. Uh, totally through through my end cap off. Anyways, uh, thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you very very much for your support. patreoncom slash Cast if you want to support me over there. Also, uh, the YouTube membership thing works down there at the bottom if you want to support me here on YouTube. Thanks again to everyone who does support me. You guys are amazing. I already said that. You know, this ending totally didn't work out the way it usually does. I don't know what's going on there. Just totally, completely lost my mind. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Definitely did not know it.